diverse way of communicating with each other. There is knowledge in diversity, and that it's not just super virtuosic, typical, thin, white bodies. If you are alive, you are a mover, and so therefore you can be a dancer. We're both professional dancers. We met within that community, and when I found out that she had experience teaching and choreographing in the integrated dance world, I said, well, let's talk about working together here. Then we met Sarah, and, and then she got involved. In, in this dance program specifically, we've made it our, our mission. There's no disability. So whatever you can do, however you can interpret a move, you never have to be like anybody else. My name's Mireille, and I feel good. I'm, I, uh, I think I need to kind of ground and settle too and kind of get some energy out. Well, all our classes begin in the same way, so there's always a check-in. We're all different, we're all unique, and the movement that we do will be different for each of us. This choreographer wanted to bring mixed-ability arts to Edmonton. She wanted to do a project. I was like, okay, she needs some token wheelchair dancers. I'd try it. I didn't think I'd like it. In fact, I was dragging my heels a little bit. I'm like, I'm not going to like it, but I'll do it anyways. But that very first exercise, she said, move around the room in any way that you want and just feeling the space. And that was such a freeing phrase and a freeing way to move for the first time since being in a wheelchair. I wasn't thinking about point A to point B. I wasn't thinking about trying to get somewhere or do something functionally. I was finally doing something for myself. We're all here to work, uh, which is something I really, really value. This is, um, just for clarity, uh, you know, I joined because this is not about a bunch of people with and without disabilities in a dance studio playing around. We are here to work, um, but everybody manages to keep that in mind and be, be incredibly open and incredibly accepting and incredibly welcoming. Finding out that I have limitations, that is the most difficult thing for always. It doesn't matter what, what form of dance it is or what group I'm working with. My left arm doesn't doesn't work as well as I'd like it to, but if another dancer picks it up and holds it out, it suddenly becomes alive and part of the dance. It's challenged me, and so I've learned a lot from that, and they've taught me a lot about what it means to move with certain machinery. The machinery was foreign to me. The mobility of waist no longer becomes an inhibitor, but it helps in the dance. And that's a huge thing because mostly in everyday life, our mobility device such as a wheelchair or scooter is something that inhibits us, for example, by from going upstairs or from, you know, accessing a playground. What might be a good thing to write or draw next to this is what side of the stage you're on. Mm -hmm because there are a lot of crossings. And we came up with a sort of very general image or idea around what it means to see each other and also to let ourselves be seen. If I'm to be seen, it means that I need to reveal something of myself. I need to be present. Orbiting back to where we came from. Yeah, okay, great. So when back to your chair. So the other side of the coin is, is to see, to see someone else. And so how do we see other people? For me, um, see and be seen just means that we're, we're finally in a place where I want to show people that you don't have to fit in a box to be a dancer. All of our sections that we have made will be on small little pieces of paper like this. And then what will happen on Saturday is we're going to go like this and go, you know what, I think it's gonna go like this. And we will try that order, and we'll realize, oh, that doesn't work, and then we'll go like this, because we are in the crunch time. Right. So if there are other times that you would like me to look at the on the corner. And lift your chest through your arms up towards the ceiling, towards those bright.
bright lights. It gets to see each of these people. Actually see their faces. It's 40 minutes. Enjoy it. Because like this is 40 minutes that we've put a lot into. Breathe again. Get rid of it all. Unfortunately, there's so few images out there and so few places where you can see artists with disabilities that we actually have a totally open playing field as far as building an audience. We wanted to make a dance where I was in a mirror, kind of looking at myself, kind of struggling, and then Harmony was going to come out and, and be my, my imagined self. We developed it into something much more than that. It, it kind of got away from the, the negative um, side of it and just became more of an expressive dance of us coming together. We started with the idea of, of support and what does it mean to support someone else physically carrying weight. In a lot of sort of existing pieces and a lot of the culture you see people with disabilities lifted or elevated or helped to excel or succeed somehow and I think that that has its place. I think that that place is maybe uh, some distance from where we are now. I carry Naomi for a portion of the piece, she carries me, we lift each other, we move together, we move apart. Uh, it was really important to me that there was that, there was that balance. I wanted to address the elephant in the room. It's a setup that's quite dramatic because we see all the standing dancers on one side and all the sitting dancers on the other. I thought it would be an image that would have some tension in it and perhaps a bit of discomfort for the audience who is pretending not to see something that we all see and we all know. and then for me though was when a standing dancer and a sitting dancer met in the middle and we showed that we could come together and make something beautiful. We're not equal because we pretend that we don't see differences. I liked it very much. I think the, the director was very good. I hope that the projects continue and I hope that they continue and expand and become 
part of the general dance community. It's a great way to spend an hour just seeing people moving in ways you wouldn't expect. I think the most rewarding thing for me has been a connection with a group of you know, intergenerational people, very diverse situations and the kind of energy and dialogue that that creates out of all of this. And we have like a peace with each other. And that's very rewarding. You don't get that in groups all the time. The real goal is to have a whole community of dancers who have experienced dance training and dance practice and dance performance and who can really begin to take on leadership roles. Discovering how far I can go and realizing that that's a journey that doesn't end. Discovering limitations and how to deal with them. Discovering how quickly a community builds and discovering how absolutely important it is to me and my lifestyle because without it I feel lost. I'm starting to now see myself and consider myself a professional dancer as well in my field of integrated dance. I just don't want people's perceptions to be limited that you have to be able to stand and move perfectly to be a dancer. Every single body, no matter what their limitation, their range of motion, their age, gender, can dance and that all movement is communicative and that all movement is expressive and all movement can be art. <laughs>